Join us as we revisit the epic monster brawl Godzilla. 1954 Godzilla, a prehistoric alpha predator, is lured to Bikini Atoll in an attempt to kill him with a nuclear bomb. In 1999, monarch scientists Ashiro Serizawa and Vivian Graham investigate the skeleton of a monster similar to Godzilla in a cavern unearthed by a collapsed uranium mine in the Philippines. They also find two giant spores, one dormant and one hatched, along with a trail leading to the sea. In Japan, the Janjira nuclear power plant experiences unusual seismic activity. Supervisor Joe Brody sends his wife Sandra to lead a team of technicians into the reactor. So Tremor breaches the reactor, forcing Joe to close the reactor door before Sandra and her team can escape while the plant collapses. Fifteen years later, Joe and Sandra's son Ford, a U.S. Navy officer, returns from a tour of duty to his wife, Elle, and son Sam in San Francisco. However, he must immediately depart for Japan after Joe is detained for trespassing in Jinjira Quarantine Zone. Joe is determined to find out the cause of the meltdown and persuades Ford to accompany him to retrieve vital data from their old home. They learn that the zone is uncontaminated and retrieve the data, but are discovered and taken to a facility in the plant's ruins. The facility harbors a massive chrysalis that had been feeding off the plant's reactors for 15 years and emitting intense electromagnetic pulses over time. A giant winged insect-like creature emerges from the chrysalis and escapes, destroying the facility. Joe is severely injured and later dies. The incident is reported publicly as an earthquake. Serizawa and Graham join a U.S. Navy task force led by Admiral William to search for the creature, dubbed a Muto, massive unidentified terrestrial organism. Serizawa and Graham reveal to Ford that a 1954 deep sea expedition awakened Godzilla. Nuclear tests in the 1950s were attempts to kill him. When this did not work, Project Monarch was established to study Godzilla and similar monsters secretly. They also explain that the Muto caused the Janjira meltdown. Ford reveals Joe had monitored echolocation signals indicating the Muto was communicating with something, presumably Godzilla. The Muto attacks a Russian submarine and drops it in Oahu to eat its nuclear material. Godzilla arrives, causing a tsunami in Honolulu, and briefly engages the Muto in battle until it flees. Serizawa deduces Godzilla was only listening as the Muto was communicating with something else, prompting the military to investigate the other spore stored in the Yucca Mountain Nuclear Waste Repository in Nevada. However, a second, bigger, wingless Muto has already emerged and attacks Las Vegas. The scientists deduce that it is female and was what the male was communicating with, their signals being a mating call. Over the scientists' objections, Stentz approves a plan of using nuclear warheads to lure all three monsters out into the open ocean and destroy them. Returning to the U.S., Ford joins the team delivering the warheads by train. The remaining warhead is airlifted with Ford to San Francisco, where the monsters are converging, and activated after Godzilla appears at the Golden Gate Bridge, only for the male Muto to snatch it and take it to the female, who forms a nest around it in the Chinatown area. While Godzilla and the Muto's battle, Ford and a strike team enter the city via Halo Jump to find and disarm the warhead before it detonates. Unable to access the timer, the team gets the warhead onto a boat for disposal at sea, while Ford destroys the nest. Godzilla defeats the Mutos and collapses on the shore from exhaustion. Ford gets the boat out to the open sea, is rescued before the warhead explodes, and reunites with his family at an emergency shelter the following morning. Godzilla rewakens and returns to the sea, while the media dubs him the King of the Monsters and speculates whether he might be a savior. Kong, Skull Island. In 1944, two World War II fighter pilots, American pilot Hank Marlowe and Japanese pilot Gunpei Akari, parachute onto an island in the South Pacific after a dogfight and engage in close combat until the fight is interrupted by a giant ape. In 1973, Bill Randa, head of the U.S. government organization Monarch, plans a search for primeval creatures on the recently discovered Skull Island. He recruits a U.S. Army unit commanded by Lieutenant Colonel Preston Packard, tracker and former British Special Air Service Captain James Conrad, and anti-war photographer Mason Weaver. Arriving at Skull Island, Packard's men begin dropping seismic explosives, developed by Randa's seismologist Houston Brooks, to map out the island and prove Brooks' hollow earth theory. The unit is then attacked by the giant ape, scattering the survivors across the island. Two groups form between the survivors, one with Conrad, Weaver, Neves the researchers, and one of the soldiers, the other with Randa, and the rest. Packard searches for the transport helicopter piloted by Major Jack Chapman, intending to use the weapons on board to kill the ape. 
Conrad's group encounters the local Iwi natives and an older Marlow. Marlow tells the group about the giant ape named Kong, which protects the island from predators, including a race of subterranean reptilian creatures dubbed Skull Crawlers, which were awakened from the bombing and responsible for killing Kong's entire species, leaving him as the last of his kind. The Iwi believe when Kong dies, a giant skull crawler will awaken and ravage the island. Marlow reveals he and Akari had become friends during their time on the island. They ride down the river, where Neves is torn apart by carnivorous birds, and secure communication with Packard's group. When they regroup with Packard, he insists on searching for Chapman. Marlow leads them through a mass grave of dinosaurs and Kong's family members. The skull crawler that killed Chapman attacks them, killing Randa and others before Weaver triggers a flammable gas explosion that kills it. Learning of Chapman's death, Packard reveals his plan to kill Kong and avenge his fallen men. Marlow and Brooks attempt to explain that killing Kong would lead to the skull crawlers running rampant, but Packard refuses to listen. The group part ways, with Packard's group retrieving the weapons from Chapman Chopper and laying a trap for Kong at a nearby lake, while the non-military personnel head back to the boat. Conrad and Weaver meet Kong up close, and seeing his true peaceful nature, resolve to save him. Packard group lures Kong with the remaining seismic charges and incapacitates him with ignited napalm. Conrad, Weaver, and Marlow arrive, and after a standoff, persuade the other soldiers to spare Kong, but Packard refuses to yield. As the others retreat, the giant skull crawler emerges from the lake, and Kong crushes Packard. The skull crawler fights and overpowers Kong, but in the end, the ape is victorious with the human's help. The survivors reach the rendezvous point and leave the island as Kong stoically watches. In a post credit scene, Monarch detains and recruits Conrad and Weaver, who are informed by San Lin and Brooks that Kong is not the only monster king and show archive footage of cave paintings depicting Godzilla, Mothra, Rodan, and King Ghidorah. The final image shows Godzilla and Ghidorah in battle. To get ready for a monster mashup of epic proportions, Godzilla, King of the Monsters, five years after the existence of giant monsters called Titans, was revealed to the world, Dr. Emma Russell, a paleobiologist working for the Titan studying organization Monarch, and her daughter Madison witnessed the birth of a larva called Mothra. Emma calms Mothra using the Orca, a device that can emit frequencies to attract or alter Titan behavior. A group of eco-terrorists, led by former British Army Colonel Alan Jonah, attacks the base and abducts Emma and Madison. Monarch scientist Dr. Zashiro Serizawa and Vivian Graham approach former employee Dr. Mark Russell, Emma's ex-husband and Madison's father, to help track them down. Mark is reluctant at first due to his hatred toward Godzilla, whom he blames for his son Andrew's death during the events in San Francisco, but eventually agrees. The Monarch team follows Godzilla to Antarctica, where Jonah plans to free a three-headed titan codename, Monster Zero. Emma frees and awakens Monster Zero, who proves to be hostile. He slaughters Monarch's G-Team, battles Godzilla, and devours Graham before escaping. The team later realizes that Emma is working with the terrorists. From a Monarch bunker, Emma contacts Monarch and argues that the Titans must be awakened to heal the Earth from the human impact on the environment, pointing to Monarch research, indicating that Titans can terraform and replenish ecosystems. Zuma awakens Rodden in Mexico, and the Monarch team lures it towards Monster Zero. After Monster Zero defeats Rodden, Godzilla ambushes Monster Zero, severing his left head. During the fight, the U.S. military launches a prototype weapon called the Oxygen Destroyer, seemingly killing Godzilla. Unaffected, Monster Zero regrows his lost head and awakens the other dormant titans worldwide, with Rodden submitting to his rule. A heartbroken Madison disowns Emma. Through analyzing Monster Zero's abilities and mythological text, Monarch deduces that it's King Ghidorah, a highly destructive alien, and that it likely seeks to destructively terraform Earth for itself. A post-pupation Mothra flies to Monarch's Bermuda base to communicate with Godzilla, who is recuperating in an ancient underwater city in the Hollow Earth. The team uses a submarine to locate Godzilla's highly radioactive lair. Deducing it will take too long for Godzilla to heal on his own, Serizawa sacrifices himself by manually detonating a nuclear warhead to speed up the process, reviving Godzilla and increasing his power. 
Temur realizes that Ghidorah reign over the other Titans is bringing destruction that will be far worse than anything humans could inflict, but Jonah ignores her pleas to try and stop it. Madison overhears her mother plan to lure Ghidorah to Boston and steals the Orca so she can implement it herself. Arriving at Fenway Park, Madison broadcasts a frequency that calms the Titans but unwittingly attracts them all to her location. Ghidorah lands in Boston to destroy the Orca. Godzilla arrives to engage him in battle with Monarch personnel assistance. Mark leads a team to rescue Madison and escape the city, learning Godzilla radiation levels are increasing and will lead to a thermonuclear explosion. Mothra arrives to help Godzilla, but is intercepted by Rodin. She defeats him, but is injured in the process. Skidora overpowers Godzilla, but Mothra sacrifices herself and transfers her energy to Godzilla. Mark, Emma, and Madison are reunited and reactivate the Orca to prevent Ghidorah sucking Godzilla and Mothra's energy out of Godzilla. Emma sacrifices herself to keep Ghidorah distracted chasing the Orca, giving Mark, Madison, and the Monarch team time to escape. Godzilla enters a newly empowered state and vaporizes Ghidorah. Rodden and the other Titans converge on Godzilla and bow to him as their new Alpha. During the ending credits, news clippings and Monarch public files show that the Titans are now healing the planet, a suspected second Mothra egg has been discovered, and some Titans are converging on Skull Island. Ancient cave paintings of Godzilla and Kong-like Titans locked in battle are shown. In a post credits scene, Jonah and his forces purchase Ghidorah, previously severed left head in Mexico. To get ready for a clash of Titans you won't forget, today, we delve into the epic monster brawl Godzilla vs. Kong. It's five years after the dragon-like extraterrestrial King Ghidorah awakened the monstrous Titans around the world and was defeated by Godzilla, Kong is monitored by Monarch within a giant dome on Skull Island, which has been taken over by the storm that previously kept it hidden from the world. Kong is visited by Gia, the last Iwi native and young adopted daughter of Kong expert Eileen Andrews. Gia is deaf and communicates with Kong via sign language. Tapex Cybernetics employee and Titan Conspiracy podcast host Bernie Hayes extracts data suggesting sinister activities at Apex's Pensacola facility. Godzilla attacks the facility and Bernie stumbles on a massive device during the rampage. Madison Russell, a listener to Bernie's podcast, enlists Josh Valentine to investigate Godzilla attacks. Apex CEO Walter Simmons recruits former monarch scientist and hollow earth theorist Nathan Lynn to guide a search for a power source into the hollow earth, the Titans home world. Lind is hesitant as his brother died in an expedition to the Hollow Earth due to a strong reverse gravitational effect. He agrees when Walter reveals that Apex has developed heaves, specialized craft able to withstand the gravity field. Lind convinces Andrews to let Kong guide them via an outpost in Antarctica. Lind, Andrews, and an Apex team led by Walter's daughter may aboard a barge escorted by the U.S. Navy, carrying a sedated and restrained Kong. Godzilla attacks the convoy and defeats Kong, then retreats after the ships trick him into thinking they are destroyed. Kong is airlifted to the Hollow Earth entrance, and the team follows him into the tunnel in the heaves. Bernie joins Madison and Josh in their investigation. They sneak into the wrecked Apex base, discover a secret underground facility, and become locked into a Hyperloop transport to Apex Hong Kong headquarters, where they find a test of Mecha Godzilla. It is telepathically controlled by Ren Serizawa, the son of the late Ashiro Serizawa, via neural networks from the severed head of Ghidorah. Walter intends to harness the Hollow Earth energy to overcome Mecha Godzilla power supply limitations. Inside the Hollow Earth, Kong and the team find an ecosystem similar to Skull Island. In his species' ancestral throne room, they find the remains of an ancient war with Godzilla kind and a glowing axe made from another Godzilla dorsal plates. Identifying the power source, the Apex team sends its signature back to their Hong Kong base despite Andrew's protests. Attracted by Mecha Godzilla activation, Godzilla arrives in Hong Kong. Godzilla drills a shaft directly to the throne room with his atomic breath. Maya and the Apex team heave is crushed by Kong. Kong, Andrews, Gia, and Linda send to Hong Kong, where Kong engages Godzilla in a final battle in which Godzilla emerges victorious, leaving Kong in a dying state. Madison, Josh, and Bernie are caught by security and taken to Walter, who orders Ren to activate Mecha Godzilla, which is then possessed by Ghidorah consciousness. It kills Walter, electrocutes Ren, and overwhelms Godzilla. Lind revives Kong by detonating the heave on his chest, acting like a defibrillator. 
Gia convinces Kong to help Godzilla, as Mechagodzilla overpowers both Titans. Josh momentarily short circuits Mechagodzilla controls with Bernie Flask of Liquor on its control panel. Godzilla charges Kong Axe with his atomic breath, allowing Kong to destroy Mech Godzilla. Madison, Bernie, and Josh reunite with Madison Father Mark, while Godzilla and Kong acknowledge each other and go their separate ways. Sometime later, Monarch establishes an observation post in the Hollow Earth, where Kong now rules. The Titans have clashed. Who will reign supreme? Only time will tell. Thanks for watching this recap, and see you in the next one. Flicks and TV.